KP, uh oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! -hoo! I said, clap like you're crazy to my Lord Brown right here. Right here. Right here, Lord Brown. Say something, because I don't want people to think I'm, I've been on the medicine. Greetings to each and everyone listening on KPU, KP00 San Francisco 89.9 FM with the one and only. Pum, 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 with life and health and strength to be able to just feed the masses with the music once more, once again. You know what I mean? It's my third visit to, to San Francisco, the Bay Area, in two years. And I just want to say blessed love and thank you to all my fans, all my new fans, all my loyal fans, and all my fans yet to come and forward. Oh, listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> he is so, so, so humble. I'm not going to say it over the radio. <laughs> Brixton, the hit man, doing the damn thing, doing the UCSKU. KUSF. KUSF. I always do this wrong. Saturday. Saturday Night Rock House, KUSF Radio, 90.3 FM on Saturday from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Y'all need to learn to love to listen to Her. the man called Brixton. So, Lloyd, I mean... You know, I play your music a lot. Thank Snow you. Wine Thank and, you. And, 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 and uh, that main squeeze thing, I love that. They Thank love you. that. Thank you know, you. we keep that in rotation. Mm -hmm. This new thing, I'm so glad to be able to receive the new album, Silver. Is This is what we've been we're listening to the last, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. Dude, you you doing a damn thing. Well, Silver, basically, I, I, you know, I've got I to gotta make a correction right here. Silver is, is my... Um, my 11th album it's my 11th album and I'm, and I'm on my 13th album now somebody squeeze me on about the fact this man he's like wait a minute this is my 11th album yeah, it's my 11th album wow you go for it thank you and what do you what do you what, how do you get to this point? One to eleven. How do you get there? Well, it's just perpetual motion. You know what I'm okay. saying? It's, it's, it's all about the music, nothing else. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't look any further than the music because for me that's what it's all about. Because okay. for my upbringing, you know, as a Black British youth of Carib Caribbean parentage, you know, our 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 upbringing is is more or less typical. You know, my mom and, my mom and dad worked hard. You know, in in the week and you know, as part of relaxation, they would cook and they would play music. And as a youth growing up from life. Wait a minute, say that again. See, see, I want some people to get some history why we do this. This is why we keep up so much mess on this show. Because the bottom line is, is that some people think that we didn't never have them kind of moments. And you had to be a Heathcliff or somebody on the Cosby show to have moments where y'all sit around and say <laughs> and eat and act like human beings, loving each other. You understand? Right. Overstand it. Continue, please, brother. Well, for me, you know, like I said, it, you know, my mother... Big old handsome black mind, too, y'all. Y'all better come out to the show Saturday, y'all girls. Y'all want to see some fine gentlemen <laughs> to squeeze on. We're talking about grown folk business. Come on, Lord. <laughs> okay. As I was saying, right, you know, my, my, upbringing, my upbringing from an early age was, you know, listening to my father, my father playing music. On a weekend as a form of relaxation, my mom. What instrument he played? No, just just playing records, just playing oh, records. Oh, just playing. Yeah, he was just, DJing. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, he, he he would play music as a form of relaxation, mm -hmm. and you know his his influences stemmed from like the original R and B, Fats Domino, and um, you know people like Sam Cooke and Brooke Benton, and followed all the way through right down to Bob Marley and Dennis Brown and Gregory Isaac. So I would get the whole spectrum of music wow. from like a very young age. But okay. at that time, I didn't really understand how emotive the music was to me. But it wasn't until I actually grew, grew a little more. And the first tune I actually heard my father play that brought me to tears was a song called These Arms of Mine by Otis Redding. And from there, it was like, you know, there was just something about the music that really held me. It held me on an emotional as well as spiritual level it was wow. something it was something that you know that i kept close to me but it wasn't it wasn't made apparent until my first visit to jamaica in 1977 and that was the year that um, bob marley released his exodus album okay. and there was a track on there that done the same thing to me made me cry every time i heard it it was a track called guiltiness there was just something about the chord the, you know the chord structure in that song that just brought tears from my eyes you know and remember, being, you know, being a black British youth, you know, growing up and not really getting no, um, 
reggae music on a regular level, not right, seeing black right. people represented on TV Come from on, an early here. age. Come on, and going to Jamaica. I told y'all, and seeing <laughs> and seeing Come on. and feeling reggae music right. twenty four right. seven wall to wall, right. you know, was a very right. big culture shock for me. So as a result of that, I just fell in love with Jamaica straight mm. away. Mm. And then on my second visit in 1981, that's when it was confirmed that I really wanted to be a singer, a okay. messenger of sorts. So okay. um, that's what basically happened. I, you know, I, I went to a lot of concerts and dances and sound okay. system dances and things like that. And um, you know, due to circumstances beyond my control, I had to come back to England and um, I auditioned for a band within that same year, August the 19th, 1982. Okay. That's when I got first paid to sing. <laughs> so I've been in the business for 27 years. I've been singing bless for 27 it, years. Bless it, mm -hmm. bless it. And so is that a part, like you said, it's, it's not about the pay for you? It's not, it's not so much about a pay. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm not, not going to front. we got to eat, you know what I'm saying? Come on. But for me, Come on, you know, it's, it's, it's the music first. Work I mean, you know, some, some get into the music for different reasons, and, I, you know, and I'm not going to judge no one. But for me, it's all about the music. I love the rudiments of music. Mm -hmm. I love what puts the music together. Mm -hmm. I love what it, bring, it brings out, and I, and I appreciate how people feel as a, as a result of it. I mean, okay. you know, with this album, basically, here, I recorded it at my studio in London, and it's traveled so far with the aid of the internet and the digital revolution right. and by word of mouth, and it's reaching you today, and I'm able to sit here and talk to you about Watch my it. music. Watch so, it. you know, so I'm blessed and we thankful We're going to call him Preacher in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It's just, it's just true. What are you saying, Lord? Uh, <laughs> what are you saying? We're able to work it out. We're able uh, to work it out. Did y'all open a door, a window? That's right. You man. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all oh about paving gosh. the way. It's all about paving you know, the way. And I, I, I love the fact that it's um, very, very uh, creative in a way where nothing is the same. Well, I, I get bored very easily. Ooh, I, I, I get bored very easily. If I. I, I like concept albums. I'm, okay. a, I'm a big fan of the concept album. And the one album that I really incline myself towards whenever, whenever I create an album is Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. For me, that's the greatest concept album there, okay. there is. Wow. Simple as, you know. Wow. And for me, you know, I like to keep things in that, in that same concept. And for me, I don't like to, to have too many songs in the same wow. key or the same beat or what have you. So I like to keep the listener interested and, you know, and to realize, well, it's not going to be the same track you're going to hear right, next, right, right, you know. And the, right. and, the, and the great test for me is is when my fans are able to say, you know what, Lloyd, I can put your album on and I can clean the house, I can wash the dishes, right. I can cook, I can cook some food, I can actually chill out, read a book, and even sleep. You know what I'm saying? And that that for me is is the great test of of my watch album. Watch it now. There you go. Watch <laughs> it. Now. Make yourself a pop your collar. Oh, you mean? <laughs> Dust the dirt off the shoulder, just man. Squeeze yourself. <laughs> hey, somebody loving you. Listen, this whole thing around uh, the, the, the singles that came before. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how is it uh, for a young man like you have, because um, can we say, or should we ask, are you an independent artist? I'm an in are you assigned with any? I'm, I'm an independent artist now. I was signed to Jetstar Records from 2000. Wow. Okay. And Jetstar was basically the leading distributor okay. of black, black music okay. um, in the country. Okay. And I was signed to them for, I had a three album deal with them. And um, I recorded um, two albums. The first of which was called Deep, which I co-produced with Bitty McLean. Okay. Um, and the, and the follow-up was Against the Grain, okay. which really kind of introduced me to the world market. And that album was also co-produced with myself and Bitty McLean. So let's go back, kind of back to this question with the mainstream. You know what it is, what it feels like to be signed. Well, can, it's, can, it's can we get to that? It's it's nice at first. It's okay. nice at first, but the, but the, the you know the one the one thing that I've encountered when a lot of artists were basically signed, a lot of reggae artists from Jamaica and from England, um, was that they didn't really know how to market reggae acts. Oh. I mean, I was I was signed to. Arista Records, which was, you know, obviously a, a, right. a, a more major label than Jetstar Records in 1995. We had a tune called um, Stress, which was like number number one in the, in the English reggae charts for like around 10, 11 weeks. So we was headhunted by labels like, like Epic and, okay. and Ireland and what have you. And they were basically asking us if we knew, if we heard of Shabaranks. And I'm saying, well, no, I, we know Shabaranks before you know Shabaranks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so with that, 
you know, Hello. it was obvious that they didn't know how to basically market right. market us and. You know, we just basically fulfilled our obligations within the contract and we just, you know, we've done what we had to do, but it was always the marketing that kind of let us down. So, you know, it was just a case where it was just a matter of time where we were let go, if you like. But for me, you know, that, that was an experience for me to, to go through. At least I can say in my lifetime I was signed to a major, a major label, but that's not, you know, that's not what it's about for me. Like I say, you know, it's, it is all about the music and feeding the people and just being, you know, giving your emotions and spiritual spirituality right. to the people. Do you right. know what I'm saying? It's not you know, it's not a gimmick thing, it's not a thing where